Hello everybody, my name is Kai Wan. Today I'm going to compare two different 1 inch size sensor camera. The first one will be the Canon G5X Mark II, and the second one will be the Sony RX100 Mark V-A. They are pretty much identical. The specs are pretty much the same. They both have the 20.1 megapixel sensor, they both have super fast zoom lens, they both have built in EVF. But today I'm just going to talk about the photography standpoint because on the internet everyone talks about the video capabilities, but no one talks about the photography. The biggest difference for a photography standpoint will be the zoom range. The Sony 24 to 70, Canon 24 to 120. So you might think why I choose the Sony RX100 Mark V, not the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because this is the last Sony RX100 lineup with the super fast lens. And second, these two cameras have a very similar price point. The RX100 Mark V slightly higher, but not too much. RX100 Mark 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's just so much expensive. So before comparing these two super fast lens compact cameras, let's do a quick unboxing first. Okay, so Sony gives us lots of paperwork. So in the box, we have a hand strap, we have a USB micro USB, not a type C cable and a power brick, a super small MPBX1 Sony battery, two little adapter to put some kind of longer, wider camera strap onto this small camera. And the last one will be the Sony RX100 Mark V. Hell yeah. This camera smells weird. Okay, so this is the RX100 Mark V. Let's unbox the next one, the Canon PowerShop G5X Mark II. In box, we still have some paperwork and a CD. Are you kidding me, Canon? A CD and a battery charger in the box. Sony sell the battery charger separately. So thumbs up, Canon, wrist strap, and batteries made in China. So Sony include a USB cable, Canon doesn't. The Sony have a camera strap adapter, Canon doesn't. Okay, so this is unboxing part. Right now, we are going to take these two cameras outdoors, shoot some photos. We're going to test the image quality, focusing speed, uh, pros and cons, what I like, what I don't like, little detail stuff. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so I'm back with these two awesome one inch sensor camera. Right now, we are going to do a side by side comparison, talk about the pros and cons. The first one I found the aperture, the shutter speed, the aperture, the basic control of your exposure. The Sony side, this control ring, it's so slow. Stop down the aperture from 1.8 to 11. Just so slow. In this control ring on the Sony, you cannot change the sensitive, so just super duper slow. You can also change the aperture by pressing the down button and you can change the shutter speed and aperture with the same dial, but the control ring just I think it doesn't work for me. Aperture control on the Canon is so much faster and so much intuitive. Look at this 1.8. 11 just so fast and intuitive, but the control ring on the Sony side We can customize to different functions like aperture shutter speed exposure comp ISO white balance picture style Lots of stuff, but on the Canon side, we just stuck with the aperture control and the shutter speed control Both of these cameras have super fast lens, but if you zoom in all the way in the aperture will stop down to 2.8, but how fast it is. The Sony, if you zoom into 32, the aperture will stop down to 2.8. It's super fast, 24 to 32. On the Canon side, Canon have a faster lens through the entire zoom range. We can zoom all the way into 70 mil until it's stopped down to 2.8. Both of the lowest ISO will be 125, but the Sony side, we can extend the ISO to 80 so we can use the ND we, we both have three stop ND and Sony can extend to 80 ISO so Sony if you are going to shoot in the bright sunlight we can use slower shutter speed and the Canon 125 ISO just a little bit faster shutter speed but 
On the Sony side, we have a slowest shutter speed of 30 seconds. On the Canon side, we have 30 seconds. And if you push it further, we have Bob. Bob, you can shoot as long as you want. <laughs> Canon. Next, we're going to talk about the best part of this Canon camera, how to change the focus point. It's just so easy with this huge touchscreen. And if you want to use EVF, you can use your thumb and drag around this touchscreen to change the focus in point. This is so much better than the DSLR joystick stuff. You think joystick is fast? No, this touchscreen is so much faster. On the Sony side, although we have a fast focusing system, but we don't have a fast way to change the focusing point by swiping through the monitor because we don't even have a touch screen. So I customized the middle button to change the focusing point, but it's just so slow compared to the Canon, just like If you like to change the focusing point rapidly, nope, you cannot change it with this Sony camera, but we have focus area we can choose. We have wide, we have zone, we have center, we have flexible spot, expand flexible spot, and then lock on AF, just track some subject. Focus area on a Sony is more like a Alpha series Sony camera, but this Canon is just... <laughs> <laughs> just a power shot. When you talk about focusing speed, Sony is the king. No any company can beat them, neither Canon. But the one point AF on the Canon is not far behind. But if you want servo, the continuous focus, then Canon is just like trash. Both of these cameras can do fast roll burst. Canon can do 20 frames per second, but you need to lock the AF without the continuous focusing. On the Sony side, we can do a 24 frame burst with continuous focus on. Wow. Let's talk about stabilization. Canon is so much better. Even I zoom all the way to 120. But the Sony side, yeah, steady shot is there, but just, just okay. Let's talk about the EVF on both of these cameras. They both have sharp, bright, contrasty, vibrant color. The screen EVF is slightly bigger in the Sony, but someone like smaller EVF, someone like bigger, it depends on what you are going to shoot. Optics on the Sony is slightly bigger and wider, so you can view your image a little bit offset and you can still look at a fairly clear image. The Canon EVF optics is slightly smaller, so if you put your eyes a little bit offset, come on, just a blurry image. And the startup time. Canon is so much faster. After the lens comes out, you can shoot picture. But a Sony is more like a computer. You need to, I don't know, maybe set up some garbage stuff like Windows. The Sony startup time is just so unpredictable. Sometimes it's super fast, sometimes it's slow and glitchy. It's Sony's fault. Yeah, because the Alpha series, we have the Sony A7S, same problem. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes slow, sometimes glitchy. Come on, Sony. <laughs> Next test, we're going to test the zoom speed. The Sony we set to fast. So, three, two, one. Sony is faster because it's just 24 to 70. The Canon is slightly slower, but the focal length is longer. 24 to 120, so not a big deal. What I care about the zoom will be the zoom sound. Come on, Sony. It's just so noisy. The motor, I don't know. It's just so harsh, so high pitch. It's just annoying. But the Canon side. Lower pitch sounds more pleasing, but it's still audible. Let's talk about the charging part on these cameras. Sony use micro USB, not the fastest on the world, but it works. Canon, type C sounds good, huh? But you cannot use your regular power bank. Don't understand why Canon don't let you use the power bank to power this camera or charge the battery. They will be so much easier to travel or just go around with a single battery, but it, <laughs> if you want to start up these two cameras, you can press power on off switch. You can press 
playback button. And on the Sony side, we also have a pop-up EVF startup function. It's not on the Canon. We have a zebra level on Sony camera. I love zebra level because I can focus on the composition and don't need to look at the histogram. But on a Canon, we just have histogram, no any zebra levels. Both of these cameras have tilty screen, but the Sony, it's just harder to pull it out. I just feel like I'm gonna break the screen. Canon just have a better design. It's just so much easier to operate this tilty screen. The Canon, if you set the power save mode on, maybe one minute to power off. If you zoom all the way into 120, then the power off, the power save mode on, power off, and you restart again, it will zoom all the way to 120 again. But on the Sony side, after that one minute auto turn off, you restart the camera, it will go back to 24, the widest focal length. Just a little detail, no big deal. I just don't like the light sensor placement on the Sony because it's just next to the EVF. So if you pull the EVF, you block the light sensor, the screen turns off and you let it go, screen turn on again, and you put your eye in front of the EVF. Come on, the, the screen just on off, on off. <laughs> it's just so annoying. I think this is a deal breaker for Canon. This awesome grip, just, feels so good. Everyone will loves this grip. Just so good. But on the Sony side, come on, no grip at all. Just so slippery. You will smash this camera on the floor. Next, we're going to compare the build quality. Both of them are just okay. Sony. Yeah, just okay. It won't fall apart, but not high quality. And the Canon side. This Lens protection stuff is just so loose, just so clunky. I have no idea. Just, yeah, build quality, just okay. That's it, the comparison. And this is the pros and cons comparison. And next, we're going to compare the image quality right now. So first, we're going to test out the lens quality. When set the aperture wide open at 1.8, Canon is slightly softer in the middle. Sony is already pretty sharp. At the corner of the image, Canon is definitely softer than Sony. Both of the lenses have visible chromatic aberration. When stop down the aperture to 2.0, Canon's image is significantly sharper, and the Sony side already have a very good image quality. In the corner of the image, Canon is slightly sharper, but Sony is almost perfect. The image quality on Canon keep increasing until the aperture hit 4.5. After 4.5, the image will start to fall apart. On the Sony side, before we stop down to 4.0, the image quality will keep increasing. But after 4.0, the image quality start to fall apart. Next, we're going to test the telephoto range on both of the cameras. On Canon side, 2.8 wide open is pretty soft. When stop down to 3.2, the image is significantly sharper. We will keep increasing the image quality before f5. But after f5, the image will start to fall apart. On the Sony side, wide open at the telephoto range, the image quality is already acceptable. We will keep increasing the image quality before f5, but after f5, the image will start to fall apart. Next test, we are going to test the lens flare. As my preference, I would choose the Sony. The Sony's lens flare looks much better. Canon's lens flare looks a little bit crazy. Lots of weird light effect. The Canon lens will ruin your picture if you shoot straight into a bright light source. Next test, we are going to test the ISO on both of these cameras. On the Canon, if we set the ISO to extreme, the shadow will shift into a magenta tint that Sony won't. As my preference, I won't gain the ISO above 400 on both of these camera. Next test will be the dynamic range test. Dynamic range on both of these cameras are pretty much identical. I prefer the highlight roll off on the Canon. After two stops of overexposed, on the Sony side, the highlight will just clip without any details and also comes with some weird magenta color shift effect. How about underexposed? As my preference, I will still prefer Canon because after two stops underexposed on Sony, the highlight will shift into a green tint and the shadow will shift into a magenta tint. Just looks horrible on the Sony. I will choose the Canon because I'm a Canon shooter. I have Canon DSLR, but if you are a Sony shooter, maybe you can choose the RX100 Mark V or 
You don't even have a camera. You can choose the Sony RX100 Mark V. These two cameras are pretty much identical. If you want a slightly longer lens, come on, Canon. And if you want maybe some video features, yeah, you gotta choose Sony. Okay, so this is the end of this crazy comparison videos of these two one inch sensor camera. So if you like this video, press like, make sure to subscribe my YouTube channel to check out more comparison video. And if you want to watch more crazy video like this, check out this playlist. Okay, my name is Kaiwan and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.